uh, in many, many verses he declares himself to be, uh, also he says, there is no higher truth uh, than me, he says in the Bible Gita. Yes. Uh, so, Krishna declares himself as God. How are you doing? You okay? Good. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum. What's your name? Uh, Dananjaya. Dananjaya. Wow. How long have you been Hare Krishna? Hare Krishna, three years. Three years. Which background are you from? Which which country? Uh, Slovenia. Slovenia. So be Roman Catholic. So you're Roman Catholic. So you went from Ro Roman Catholicism yeah. to Hare Krishna. What what compelled you to take that step? Well, you know, um, I like uh, good uh, philosophy. Pardon? Uh, I like good philosophy. Okay. Sound philosophy, not it. So I I understand that uh, God revealed himself in uh, many scriptures to the ages, many prophets, right? So uh, Jesus Christ is one of them. Uh, but I feel that like Jesus Christ was re misrepresented in the Catholic Church. In which sense, uh, in which way do you believe he was well, misrepresented? First of all, we say that Jesus Christ is God. I believe he's just a prophet. Excellent. So that's the Islamic belief as well? That's very nice. Uh, Excellent. Okay. So that's one of them. And also uh, the Bible says, thou shalt not kill. But uh, the Christian world, so the Western world, uh, maintains first-class slaughterhouses. So I find this very uh, contradictory. So uh, I think that uh, if Christians would follow this injunction, thou shalt not kill, if they would uh, maintain big slaughterhouses and just eat meat uh, like without any consideration, then uh, I would have maybe more uh, faith in uh, Christian practice. Maybe I would be uh, still a practicing uh, Christian Catholic, however, however you may call it. But um, I kind of uh, was dissatisfied, so I was looking for, uh, for knowledge about God. So then I went to the Veda. Uh, the Vedas are 5,000 years old books of knowledge. And uh, they give very nice, very sound uh, philosophical system and also spiritual practice. I became a monk, so I started following seriously all the rules and regulations. I became celibate, I started studying the holy scriptures. Uh, which script, which ones? Well, the Vedas themselves. There's many books we study. Uh, the most famous is probably Bhagavad Gita. And the Upanishads, they're quite reasonably well known. Right, yes, yeah. the Upanishads, yeah. yeah. So what I understand from the step that you've taken, I'll be as quick as possible, respecting your time. So my understanding that even in the understanding of the Hindu Hindu faith and Hare Krishna, and which is off branch of that as such, is that the, the Islamic concept is that there's only one God, right. who is unlike his creation. God is not akin to his uh, creation, singularly away from the creation, but yet he observes and sees everything because he's the creator. Right. What we say, God does not have any manifestation of himself as the creation. The creation is a part of what he has created. So hence, in the Islamic perspective, I think it's mentioned in the Upanishads, chapter 2, verse 7, that there is nothing like unto God. Upanishads, chapter 2, verse 7. Do not give image to God. It says in the same verses. So this is the singular message of Islam, you see, that the one supreme God and I'm sure you have some knowledge on Islam. Some. Some, yeah. So on this basis, we then have our relationship. We've got to acknowledge that everything he's created are signs of the creator. But we don't give the creation the adulation that is given to the creator. So in our religion, we refuse the concept of any inclinations of man being like upon to God. So just like you said about Jesus, you found that a bit unsettling the fact that a man can possibly be God and then you've understood him to be a prophet which is the Islamic testification so we know from the from the Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishads that the major protagonists of the Hindu faith as well they were also later deified Ganesh, Ram, Vishnu and so forth so what this really happened this was an incorporation not of their verbatim statements they don't go around preaching that they are God rather the third party narratives within the Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita and more interestingly as well in the New Testament they give a higher eulogy to these individuals however they never claim verbatim themselves from express statements from within these scriptures that they have claimed to be God very interesting you see yeah, well, uh, the Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavad Gita, 
some water, all energies. He says that he is the source of all uh, both material and spiritual manifestation. He also says the very famous um, verse. He says, Sarva Dharma Parikya Jam, Anutam Shinaram Rajam, Alham Tansame Papedio, Moksha Shyami, Vatna Suchaha. That means that. That's Sanskrit, uh, in Sanskrit, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. means that you, uh, you give up all. Dharma, all religion, and you surrender unto him. Well, Dharma so, means you give up your inclination. It, it, it doesn't testify to religion. Well, it's not, Dharma, yeah. Dharma, well, we understand Sanskrit from uh, the simple succession. So, uh, yes. the spiritual master, he translates Sanskrit, and that's how we understand. So, uh, in uh, the translation that we started, Bhagavad Gita as it is, which comes from uh, the oldest, one of the four uh, main disciplic sessions. But we are a part of also Gloria Vaishnava Sampradaya, comes directly from Krishna. It is uh, also translated in this uh, also as a religion, Dharma. Okay, there's occupational duty, but uh, well, even a religion is in a way, it's just a, it's a, also like a, it's a duty, right? It's a duty of man. Yeah, to, to but it's never specified as religion uh, as such, you see. The, the term in it. We, we have different translations, maybe. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, if I show you my Bhagavad Gita, you know, we can now argue why this Bhagavad Gita is more, is more authoritative. But authoritative than the other, other ones, scriptures, yeah. So we translate also Dharma as, as a religion. So, uh, you know, Krishna, he declares himself, there's many more slokas and verses. Uh, yeah, I'm, says, I'm yeah. aware, yes. Um, in many, many verses, he declares himself to be. Uh, also, he says there is no higher truth uh, than me. He says in the Bible of Gita. Yes. Uh, so, Krishna declares himself as God, basically. So, you which know, you find, which you found repelling, according to the Christian. And so, you found the idea yeah. that Jesus being God as a man to be repelling. Why? So, this seems to be symptomatic of that. Yeah. Well, Jesus, he says, um, you. Um, yeah. About what verse I would use. He says, let's say, uh, you can only get to the Father through me. Or he, he many times mentions the Father. The Father, oh Father, uh, who are in heaven, and so Hello, on, Peter. right? So he clearly points out to the Father. So, uh, you know, we understand that Krishna is the Father of Jesus. But Jesus is his son, like we are all sons of God. So Jesus is also one of the sons who. Uh, is an empowered living entity who came to this world to give the message of God. So we also understand uh, that Allah is the father of Jesus, right? Christ. We don't Jesus use the term. Christ. So uh, we'll... so Allah is Christ, and Jesus of the Christ. Jesus. So Allah Christ. is no Allah is not Christ. Well, the father of Jesus. So maybe. So no, we don't so use that terminology. The God of Jesus. Matter. We know yeah. what is what is the. Yeah, we've got to be very precise so, here. So Krishna is also uh, the, the, uh, the is another name of Allah, Krishna, or uh, uh, is, we say Raman when we chant the uh, 99 names of Allah, we say, uh, we say Rahman, sorry, we say uh, Rama or Raman, so it's very similar. Uh, it's overlapping, and, yes. Uh, yeah, you know, so we understand there's many names of God, but we understand that God is a person, ultimately. You mentioned that he doesn't do do you believe but yes, the very God, use you may. Can ask you one question. Do you believe that God has a form? Like, no, God, God does not have a form. Even in the spiritual world, like Allah doesn't have any form. God is formless. But I, how do you then, uh, like, because he said in the Quran that uh, when you uh, come to Jannah, you will behold uh, Allah. So if he doesn't have a, uh, a form, how can you behold him? Yes. So this will be done in a realm which is incomprehensible to us. So but God by the very definition is not something that you can just look at and think, oh, okay, there he is. So this will be in a spiritual realm where, where we will be not having these natural human eyes, which are limited. So I can only see as far as the shop, but this will be much more and akin to understanding God in that particular manner, you see. Okay. However, what we say, and I want you to reason. See, it seems to be a circular reasoning, what you're saying. You said initially to me, with due respect to you, that you found the concept of man being God unacceptable. So Jesus being God in the New Testament was something you did. Now you've now you've gone on to a faith which also adheres to these principles of man being God, which seems to be rather paradoxical to me. So I would suggest perhaps that the Islamic concept would make much more sense. Uh, in can I just explain? Uh, yeah. No, because I because it actually uh, Krishna he very nicely explains this in Bhagavad Gita. He says. Uh, 
uh, fools that ride me when I come um, to this world. They think of me as a uh, mere human, as a um, as a one of them, as a human, right? Uh, they fools that ride me think of my form as material. That, uh, that's why he says it for a reason, right? because Krishna when he uh, appears, uh, probably you know, in the, yeah, comes down, yes, in the form of a human, avatar, yes. Um, he uh, comes in a transcendental form, just like you said that Allah has a spiritual form that you behold when you're qualified. But you're still in the same way, Krishna also has a spiritual form. And actually, not everyone could understand, as you say, also that you have to have the. We say that uh, you can only see Krishna when your eyes are uh, purified by the sal of, of love, when you, your eyes are uh, where basically when you purify yourself and when you reach what is called Krishna Prema or love of God, then you can see uh, Krishna's spiritual form because at that point you also have a spiritual form. You're not uh, anymore conditioned by this material uh, body, which is limited. However, so we, we you are accepting that Krishna sorry. came as a man, as a, no, no, as a figure. No, no, yes. again. Krishna says, fools deride me and think of my form as a material, as human. So he says that basically you are a fool if you think that I'm human because I'm God. But despite the fact that he comes as a man. Yeah, God can also. Do, but do that's paradox. That don't you think that's paradoxical? If what you're saying, this hear you, hear what you listen to yourself carefully. You're saying that only fools can understand that he will come. In a, in a material as a material being however he does come as a material being no he says that he, he's not material that's the, he alarms because people will think in the future in the past they thought but then you but krishna, but krishna, just yeah. like krishna when he comes out that he is one of you like, like you now say krishna is one of us he's a, a mortal but that's why because krishna knows that you will think like this he's, Gives a gives a alert. Don't think like this. And yeah. try to understand my transcendental nature. Also, he says, "Janma karma chameendi bhav, evam yoveti tatva taha, tatva taha, tatva deham punar janma mamiti namiti sa arjuna." That means that um, when you understand Krishna's transcendental appearance or birth appearance and uh, his uh, transcendental activities yeah. then you won't anymore have to appear in this world be born here in this world of suffering but you will reach his eternal uh, uh, okay eternal, so i've understood sorry, yeah uh, planet where there's no coming back so spiritual world so krishna first of all he says when he comes here he doesn't come as a mortal uh, man despite and the also, fact he comes as a man no because you know, he comes in a uh, Satchidananda body, which means a body that is full of eternity, full of knowledge, and full of bliss. His body is not material. Yeah. Krishna is forever, let's say, uh, although Krishna uh, he appeared here for a little more than 100 years, uh, he eternally looked uh, 16. During his pastimes, there's historical. So he aspects. looked 16. He always looked the same, he never aged. Okay. No gray hair on Krishna. Because but still, he, despite the fact that he never, okay, I understand. Despite the fact he did not age, yeah. he still comes in the form of man. You see, not even a man. though not a man, not a man. He, even for you, for yeah. fools, yes, he, uh, fools they think of him as a man, but he comes with two hands to uh, to relax. But that doesn't mean that he's a mortal man, full of flaws, full of mistakes. But this is the argument yeah. that can I just say something? That's why Krishna, you have to understand so one thing. Just, if you want to understand God, that's a principle both me and you share. We have to understand it through the scripture because God he reveals himself inside the scripture. But this so is Krishna, if you want to understand Krishna, you can only understand it through the scripture. About Krishna is spoken by Krishna because your logic is uh, tainted, is flawed. So but, uh, but it's just, that's um, why um, we accept Krishna's word about him. Okay. So, so can if I say you want to understand Krishna, take his words. Right? Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So just to reiterate the point. Sure. You have made the claim, number one. Krishna makes the claim. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, you, okay, you said that you're okay, Krishna. fine. But, well, Krishna has made the claim yeah. that God is immaterial, that he is himself come as an immaterial, formless being. However, he's come in the form of a human being who God doesn't. Is not who doesn't God is, has form, Krishna has a form. Has a form. However, you just. you, yeah. So you just con conceded to the fact that he has legs and he's ageless. So he's always 16 in his appearance. However, what you've done without even realizing is given him that anthropomorphic understanding of him being like his creation. Now, let, let me give you an idea. You've run away from Christianity. 
But Christ says, for example, the Father and I are one. Does this make him God? No, because you rejected that outright coming from a Roman Catholic background. You understand in which context is he making this? Does he mean it literally or is he speaking metaphorically? Because listen, listen, listen carefully, my friend. Get, just absorb the information. Your rejection of Christ as God is very much akin to your acceptance of Krishna as, as the deity. And yet we are giving the anthropomorphic human characteristics by the fact that he, let me just finish my point, that he has these um, human parts like legs and, and such and such. And he's ageing it, so he comes at the age of 16, and, but he does not age. But the fact is that you've given him this human image. And this is something that Christians also argue. Look, in, Mark, in John chapter 10 verse 30, where Jesus says, the Father and I are one. They understand this to mean literally he's claiming to be the manifestation of God on the earth. However, he's not. He's simply saying one in purpose. So, in, in conclusion to your point, you've got to realize what you're saying without even realize. You, you may not even realize, but you've still given that image because you've associated creation with the creator. So, Krishna has thus become that creation in effect. How have I misinterpreted it? Krishna himself, he comes down from the spiritual world as the same Krishna here. It's not different. There's no, uh, it's not the same thing as uh, the situation with Jesus, the Son and the Father, uh, you know, also. It's the same thing. It's not, it's exactly the same is, thing. What I think our problem is that we should uh, address is more uh, the question whether God has a form. Because if we solve that issue, then we can maybe. But God does not come, so God is not in the form of his creation. Listen carefully to my words. God is not in the form of his creation, so God is not a man. God doesn't have legs that he sits down and crosses. Or God is not a 16 year old who doesn't age, no that's matter how old he is. That's what you say. But yeah. Why, question yourself, why, why, why God cannot have uh, legs, hands, uh, because in Upanishads, in your own scriptures, in chapter 2 verse 7, it says, make no image or characterize God in any way. In Upanishads, chapter 2 verse 7. Well, <laughs> I'm going to give you the reference. You've asked me, of which I, I, I'll give you the reference. Do you read the Upanishads? Which Upanishads? Is the Chokla 1 and 2 of the Upanishads. Upanishads. Well, you know, we understand there's also other, many other statements like, um, you know, there's a... Uh, there's uh, also it is said that Krishna says uh, offer obeisances to me, worship me. Uh, so, uh, Where does he say that? The Bhagavad Gita. So the say the same with Christ. This is listen. This is exactly what the Veda or the Bible now. You know, no, no, wait, no, you know why? You know why I'm giving analogy to the Bible? Do you know why I'm doing it? it let me explain to you why I'm I doing ask it. You. Now, can I just make my, let me just make my point? Why am I doing Because you said to me at the beginning, you've come from a Roman Catholic background and then you've gone into um, Hare Krishna. But I can see the overlaps between your belief now, similar to the belief you had previously. Oh, okay, if you want to consider all uh, evidences for the uh, personal existence or personality in the Bible, and, uh, there's many. Also, Jesus Christ says uh, that um, God created us, or the Bible says God created us in His own image. So, yeah. He didn't say that. He said, let us make man in our image. He didn't say in his own image. So basically, no, God, the, it's, in, it's in Genesis know, chapter 1 verse 26. God, God created us in his own image. Yes. What that means, the word there for, for God created man in his image, the word there is Adam. And Adam literally means, um, you know, he's created that. Just like it says, I think it's in Ephesians, that um, Christians were created in the image of God as well. So it doesn't carry a literal meaning, it's a metaphorical meaning because then you would have to say that all Christians are God as well, which wouldn't make sense. What I've just I well, wanted you to reflect. Our, our image, our image comes from some, like, let's say, you are, uh, why, because now you are interpreting the, the scriptures in one way and one could say that I also have my own version that comes from discipline succession. That's all right. We, maybe we won't come together, but let us use logic. This logic is also applicable. That's how ultimately God is also can be understood to a degree like that. Right? Some points can be understood. So if God doesn't have a form, God cannot have a form, then that means that he's, li he's limited. Because you have a form, that means that you are more than God. No. What it means is that what it means is that God form by definition 
gives you an understanding of some sort of objective of viewable object that is what you whatever form it may be in it's a viewable object that is the definition of form however god is formless in the sense it's nothing like his creation hence god even what you said from the from the bhagavad gita would make no sense in the fact that he's come and he's got arms and legs in a human being who's 16 year old that shows in itself that god cannot do these acts because it's not proficient to god because it says in your reference i'll give you the reference in Upanishads to chapter 2 verse 7 it says of that lord make no image and no characterization so that's like, that is what you call that's just one quote you're using one quote to define entire no no but what i'm saying like there's many again can I, I can provide you more quotes about the existence of the, no, there's an entire tradition in the, the, the Vedas of uh, worshipping uh, what you call an idol, you call it a deity. That's for a reason, because the Vedas, they authorize the deity. It is uh, the difference between, for us between an idol and a deity. Is that but that would contradict the Upanishads, blatantly. Of that Lord, words. make no graven image. An you're, you're image, an idol is a graven image. You're taking my verse, but that's still within your whole... If I take one verse from the Quran, and later on it seemed to be conflicting with my understanding later in the Quran, then I've got a problem. I've got a big problem, which would be contradictory. And God cannot be the author of confusion or contradictions. Well, you know, you said, can you say again, a graven image? Can you make a graven yes. image? Yeah, so an image, for example, a graven image is a molded image. The idols are molded. For example, they don't make themselves to the people they make the images they make they carve the statues of whatever the case may be but it clearly states that you can't do that now you're saying to me elsewhere well, it you says know, you can so that's a contradiction what that would tell me then you know well, what that would the difference between a, again a, a, what is an idol and a murti murti or a diti yeah. diti is authorized it comes uh, from a, a, a representative murti by the way how we know let's say that krishna how we know how a deity of krishna looks like is because in the brahma samhita lord brahma prays to krishna that he's, uh, lord, lord brahma prays brahma to krishna I, yeah sounds very I, much like the christian yeah go on he says uh, ishvara parama krishna sachitananda vigraha nadir nadir govinda sarva karanam karanam what is that Krishna, you are the supreme controller, you are the cause of all causes, Sarva Karana Karana, and you are Sachitananda Vigraha. You are in a form, Vigraha means form, means form that is full of knowledge, full of wisdom, full of eternity. And because we, in the Brahma Samhita, also a description, um, uh, is, uh, that Krishna plays a fruit, that he wears a garland, that he wears a dhoti, that resembles the lightning. That's why these descriptions in the Brahma Samhita, which is a part of the Vedas, by these descriptions, we, uh, by the authorization of a guru, we make a deity that represents the description of God in the Vedas. So, see, again, that's why we accept a guru, because there's uh, there's some things in the Vedas are very big, and there are, there are different injunctions in the Vedas. So that's why, to understand, we just finish, we, understand, we accept a guru who gives the siddhanta, the conclusion that should be understood. Because uh, that, that's the only way how we can understand you see the, the scripture. So again, see, I can now, we can go now, and analyze the Vedas, but I don't have time. Okay, you, uh, I know you said you, you've given me more than five minutes. I appreciate that. Can I just wrap up? Just make, yeah. make me so one minute and we'll finish. That, I think that you should study Veda more thoroughly because there's more than just Upanishads. The Vedas are constituted also of the Hindu Upanishads. It is said that there's also the fifth Veda, uh, that is the Puranas and the Itihasas. So you should study maybe the Srimad Bhagavatam, where the form of God is very minutely described and his pastimes in the spiritual world. Also, uh, you can study uh, uh, the Sri Upanishad, a very important part of Upanishad, where the, uh, the personal form of God is very nicely described. And also Brahma Samhita, which I quoted now, which clearly, clearly states that there is a form of God. So, oh, okay, so again, your, your, uh, you want to use Vedas, but your knowledge of the Vedas is not, uh, is not uh, up to me. Okay, so I just want to wrap up by the last point. When you made your last conclusion, you made reference of Lord, uh, um, uh, uh, Lord Rahma. He was Brahma. I beg your pardon. He was um, Brahman. Lord Brahman was invoking the, the overwhelming Lord, the overwhelming God, 
Krishna. Now listen, you know, listen carefully, listen to me carefully. Let it absorb what I'm telling you. This sounds very much like 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 6. I'll repeat that to you for your information, my friend. What you just told me from your religious scripture, it sounds exactly like your previous scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 6, Paul says, For unto us there is one God, the Father, by whom all things are made, and one Lord, Jesus Christ. So even here, where Christ invokes God as Lord to the glory of God the Father. So he's invoking God as Lord to, far, to the Father, to God. So there you can see the overlapping between your faith you've left and the Hare Krishna movement where you've made Lord to uh, uh, Brahma and you've made God to Krishna and the Christians are doing the exact same thing they made Christ Lord and they made God as the one true God but what it shows to no we don't know no, whoa, whoa, let's stop no, no, no what we say about him we just give him an honor we never say he's di deity Muslim, no Muslim on this earth will say to you, the Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace. I didn't say that yeah, Brahma is yeah, a deity, we don't yeah. worship Brahma. Yes, that's, that's your but you've given him the conclusion of him being a singular, let me, let me finish, you've given him a conclusion that he's Lord Brahma. Okay, Lord, you said that earlier on. So that is a title of elevation, which sometimes constitutes the almighty God as well. It's very, it's very similar to the biblical narrative. You know, in, in the Bible. But your interpretation, why do you connect it to the Bible? You know why I've connected it? Because... something, but come on. Let's not get into the vocabulary and stuff. What is understood? Look, Rama, he respect him because he is a minister in the government of Krishna, so to say. Yes. He's a very which elevated is, person. Yeah. So he say, Lord, Oh, respectful, uh, uh, worship of, not worship, but how we say, oh, Brahma, respect, whatever you say, Mr. Brahma, Sir Brahma, it doesn't matter. The point is, Brahma prays to Krishna, and he prays to his eternal God. So yeah, if so you don't accept that, then you don't accept the Vedas. So don't read the Vedas. So you're making him like a subordinate. Okay, nice speaking to you. Take care. Thank you. Okay, and you take it. I'll tell you in a minute. If you just stand there, I'll, keep, I'll come with you in one moment. So subhanallah, what have we learned today with this interesting discussion with the Hare Krishna guy? Some incredible information. How Christianity overlaps with Hinduism. How they make God as the understanding of being Krishna, a formless supposed being, yet he comes to the earth. And then they make Lord Brahma, which would be akin to Jesus also being referred to as Lord in the New Testament, like an exalted being. Sometimes the title Lord, it also carries a divine connotation. So you can see the overlap between the two religions of Hinduism and Christianity where they make a singular one supreme deity who comes to the uh, earth however he's distinguished and be, as being referred to as a lord in the case of Brahma who is then subject to the uh, to Krishna similar to the Christian belief they understand God as the only true God akin to Krishna and the Lord Jesus akin to Brahma which is in itself a subordinate deity so I hope people have followed what has been said over here and the bundle of contradictions here from our friend the Hare Krishna where he was trying to show that Krishna is unlike his creation because he's come uh, and he's declared that he is not like his creation however he is like his creation because he has the characteristics of a 16 year old male with legs think about this carefully Alhamdulillah for Islam Alhamdulillah for our religion that is so beautiful so clear cut in the terms of understanding as to who Allah is and this is why people are entering the religion of Allah in Dravizaja and Asrullahi wal Fat. What are eight and Nasa Haluna feeding Lahwaja? So maybe Hamdirabik was the fit in the Huka Natawaba. Well, as the in the insan of the Hus, Illa Ladina Amanu Amil Sali Hati, what a was of Bil Hak, what a was of his son. We have got the religion of truth. People are coming towards that because with the belief of our friends here, it's rather just a pear shaped. Okay, Jazakumullah. Salaam alaikum.